Alright, so today I just wanted to talk a bit about a new update for RetroPie. Um, so version 3.0 beta came out today and I'll show you how to get that real quick. So we're going to the RetroPie website, so blog.com slash RetroPie and then we're going under the downloads folder section and then right here you've got um, your first version um, 3.0 beta, so that's for your Raspberry Pi 1, so B, B plus, A, whatever, and then Raspberry Pi 2, um, so that's the one I got, and that's what I downloaded, so you're going to download that, it's going to come down and end up being something like this, and it's .gz file, so you're going to extract that using 7-zip, so you'll extract here, whatever, and then once it's extracted, then you'll get a .img file here. And so you're going to get your micro SD card and have a micro SD card reader, put it in your computer, and then you're going to use SD formatter, and then yes, and then you're going to choose your thing, and then press format, and then you can change other options as well to do an overwrite. But anyways, so you do that, you format it, and then you can go into Win32 Disk Imager, and you do run it administrator, and then yes, and then you'll select that file you downloaded. So on my desktop, I've got the .img file. So open, and then you'll click write. And so once it's all written, then it will be started up. So I've configured my Wi-Fi already, and then you're going to open up into a program called WinSCP um, to take care of things remotely if you want to. If not, it'll just boot straight up into emulation station. You can deal with it from there. And I'll talk about that and show you how things have changed a bit. So again, I type in my IP address, use root because I want to transfer some files, and change it and put in my password, which is Raspberry. So then we'll log in, and it will log in. Yes, I know. Um, okay, so we'll go back a file, and this is our home folder. So. Uh, things that have changed. There's a couple really big things that have changed that are actually really, really good. So I'm pretty excited about that. So in our home folder, Pi and RetroPie and ROMs, you'll see that minus MAME, all of them are just one, one, one folder per console, essentially, instead of having multiple folders per emulator, because the new functionality has the option to change your emulator right before you play your ROM. Um, so that way everything's centralized, it's really convenient, I really like that. And then also they've added a sim link for Genesis, so for those of you in the US, um, if you don't remember or know what a Mega Drive is, that's what it's called in the US, it's a Genesis. So um, that sim link to the Mega Drive folder, just to eliminate confusion for that. Okay, so that's your ROMs folder. Um, also, uh, the ROM USB ROM service has changed a bit, and so when you plug in your USB ROM, um, so let's say I've got my removal drive here, you're going to want to create a RetroPie folder like this. Um, you're first going to want to actually enable the ROM service through the setup script, which I'll show you on the screen, but um, anyways, that will enable this newer ROM service where you'll create a RetroPie folder on your USB stick before you plug it into your Pi, and then once you plug it in, it'll create two sections, which is really cool because it gives you backups for your game list now instead of just the backups of your ROMs and everything. So um, so again, it just gives you all your list of ROMs just by console. And then in your configuration folders, you've got Firm Retropy, so this is all of your emulation station configs, so all of your game list information, your pictures, whatever. Um, and then your two, so if you want to update it from your old game list files, you can just put them into this folder. And when you plug it in, it'll link them and uh, it'll update uh, your, your game list, so that way you don't have to re-scrape every single time you do an update, whatever. So that's really, really useful. I'm excited for that. Um, I think that's a really useful feature. Um, so there's that, and then also configuration files have changed a bit. So we'll go back into Home and into Opt and RetroPie and Configs. So almost all the configurations are now in this folder here. Um, so, for example, you know, if you were trying to mess with FBA before Fineburn Alpha, you'd have to go into that file folder and whatever. So now it's all actually in here. So you've got your RetroArch configs for PyFBA, Libretro, and then you also have your configs for PyFBA. And so everything's all centralized right now. It's a lot more convenient. It's a lot more straightforward. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's really, really useful. I'm really excited. Um, this has been a really good update. 
and it's made things a lot more intuitive and I think it'll be a lot more useful for newer users. So hopefully that's really useful for you. And then also for people who like to modify emulation station configs, that I mean that's a minor change, but I thought it was really useful just because I guess I'm OCD, I don't know. Um, so if we go back into EC ATC and emulation station, um, you'll see the e ES systems config is actually alphabetized now. So thanks to Buzz for doing that because that was uh, it's really nice. It makes it a little more convenient to see which things you need to modify. Um, but really, you shouldn't have to modify these all that much anymore. Now that he's, uh, you know, now that everything's all centralized, everything should be mostly up to date, so you shouldn't have to modify a whole lot. Um, and one more thing added to the RetroPie project, which I'll show you on uh, Emulation Station once uh, we we'll move on to that. But uh, there's a new RetroPie menu. Um, so, like you'd have an emulator menu for Amiga or whatever, N64, there's actually a RetroPie menu now. And this has all of the configuration files that are uh, most important. So, like RetroArch configs, you'll run that through there now. Um, and then it also has the RetroPie setup scripts. So, instead of running through all the scripts now, you can just go right into it from there, which is really, really cool. Um, I think it'll make it a lot more convenient for new users. Um, so I, I applaud that that new menu. And you can also add like LXDE and other stuff to that menu um, and install LXDE and whatever. And I have a few videos on that. So, um, But yeah, that's, that's really cool. So I'm pretty excited for that. So we'll actually go to the screen now because I think that's pretty much everything you want to, uh, need to see in the back end. Um, and yeah, we'll go to the emulation station screen now and I can show you how that thing, uh, how that stuff works and a couple more features. Um, such as choosing emulators and also the emulation station um, exit. So yeah, we'll, we'll go to that next. Alright, so I've just booted up into emulation station from my fresh install. Um, and I've also um, already configured Wi-Fi. Um, but, so as you can see, there's a new menu uh, called the RetroPie menu. And it's got some basic functional functionality that will actually be really useful. Um, and make things a lot more convenient. At least I found they've made things more convenient to me. So open up and you've got a few different settings in here. Um, so right here, configure RetroArch keyboard joystick. Instead of going through the whole RetroArch configuration thing, this will just go um, do it right here rather than having to go through the whole terminal for all that. Um, so that's really convenient. Um, and then also Raspberry config. The first thing you're probably gonna want to do on an install is expand your file system. So you open that up and um, right here, expand file system. So just like that, and then uh, finish, and then it'll reboot. So it'll take you right back to Emulation Station, and then you've also got the RetroPie setup option. Um, so this will take you to the setup script, and so that way it's easy, you don't have to go back to the command line, type in sudo, whatever else. Um, you just go right into the setup script here. So um, you'll go into that, and if you want to enable the USB ROM service I just talked about, um, you actually need to enable it here in the setup script first because by default um, it has the old configuration so it'll just give you the ROMs folder but if you want the ability to back up your game list and all that um, all you got to do is just re-enable it into in the setup script so you go into option 3 under setup press enter and then go down to option 326 the USB ROM service press enter and then enable enter and then great it's enabled so now once you um, get your USB stick, you'll want to create a folder called RetroPie, all lowercase, and then once you plug it into your Raspberry Pi, it'll give you two folders under the RetroPie folder you created, one called Configurations, which is for backing up your game lists and uh, metadata for your games through Emulation Station, and then the other one will be your ROMs, um, just like you used to do it. So that's really useful. And then if you don't know your IP address, um, it'll show you your IP address here too. So that's really useful. There's a lot of bunch of, a lot of a lot of useful things. I'm pretty excited about it. So there's a couple other things you can add as well, but um, that's that's basically most of the stuff you'll need. So uh, we'll go back out of that. And then also, I actually just added some ROMs, um, but they haven't been, ref my, my emulation station hasn't been refreshed yet. So one of the cool things that's been added that's, I mean, it's really simple, but it's convenient. Um, if you press F4 to go back to terminal, it actually gives you an option that says emulation will start emulation station will restart in five seconds, press a key to exit. So um, if you press an, a key in those five seconds, it will actually take you back to the terminal. If not, it'll just reboot right back into emulation station. So if you refresh it with the need, so right here, um, the Mega Drive now showed up because I have ROMs um, to update there. So that's really, really useful. 
Um, and it's, it's really simple, but I, I like it. It makes my life really convenient. So uh, now that my ROMs have been refreshed, we'll go into our Mega Drive thing. And this is the actually, I think the greatest part of the 3.0 update. Um, and great, granted, it's still beta, so be patient if there's bugs, um, but it really, it works for the most part. So uh, I'm gonna go into my game and I'm gonna press X or so hold down X and it'll open up into this new menu. Um, and it was the old default menu to change the video settings, but this one actually will allow you to change your emulator as well, um, as well as a few other things. But we'll open up, and so we'll say select default emulator, so we press enter on that, and so now I actually have three options to choose from. So this is why all of our ROMs are actually in one folder now, instead of three folders for each um, emulator, because this, this will override that. So now you can actually choose which um, emulator you want to use. So we'll just, I don't know, choose Pico Drive, And then um, then you just press launch, press enter, and there you go, it opens up right into it. So then to exit right back out, and it'll take you back into emulation station. So um, that that's really useful, and especially when you've got um, specific uh, ROMs. So maybe you don't like it for um, all of your ROMs, maybe you want to have a different emulator for a certain ROM because maybe it runs a little better on the Genesis plus GX or something. So then you can just choose a specific emulator for that ROM. So you press enter and it'll go back here. So um, it's it's really useful. I, I like that feature a lot. Um, then you can change video modes and render resolutions through RetroArch through it as well. So um, yeah, just play around with that, try it out, download it and see how it works for you and see uh, I don't know, see if you like it better than the old ones. I, I know I do and I think it's a really, really good improvement and um, a step in the right direction to making it a lot more user friendly. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and thinks of, uh, what things you think could be improved because um, I always appreciate feedback. So thank you, enjoy.